ever wondered, is there such thing as a healthy, good sunscreen? Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings, Mihaela Ragushi, a naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about all things sunscreen and what to look out for and the hidden dangers. At the end of this episode, I'm also going to give you an opportunity to join a health and success oriented community by clicking below and joining the Natural Health newsletter. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness to sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high performing business funded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Wednesday, which means it's time for What Would I Do? In today's episode of the Natural Podcast, we discuss this week's question. All questions are kept confidential and I read and answer as if it was me. Hence why it's called What Would I Do? The information provided is not to be taken as advice and it's solely for information purposes only. I'm not here to cure, treat or provide medical advice. I'm here to educate and inform you so you are able to take steps towards optimal health. Please discuss any medical issues with your healthcare professionals. Let's get straight into the question. The question is... The question is, I wear sunscreen and I've been told that sunscreen is bad for me. Is there such a thing as healthy sunscreen? Let's look into it. I looked at sunscreen previously on episode 106, which is called, Is Sunscreen Dangerous? So I would highly recommend listening to that podcast episode prior or even after this episode but i'm gonna it's gonna double up a little bit but let's get into it so sunscreen also known as sunblock sun lotion comes in a lotion spray gel foam you name it these days in a stick whatever you want it to come in it comes in and essentially it's made to block sun's ultraviolet uv radiation that helps protect us against getting sunburn sounds good right however Data from FDA-funded research published in the Journal of American Medical Association in 2019 and 2020 have shown that certain ingredients in sunscreen products may build up in the body at unhealthy levels. These chemicals studied were arbobenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylene, homosalate, octisalate, and octinoxate. Okay, some of these ingredients may accumulate levels higher than they would be considered safe, according to the lead researcher and team that conducted both of the studies. This begs the question to whether the FDA should reconsider whether the products are safe, right? So this is really interesting. Also, this is kind of a bit of a worry. It showed that sunscreen chemicals were still above the safety level seven days after you applied them. So you may be going to the beach today, you apply it seven days after it is, the chemicals are still there, with two of them still above the threshold on day 21. That is dangerous. Seven, uh, several common chemicals filters appear in endocrine disruptors. Many studies in animals and cells have found and shown that chemicals affect reproductive and development after altering uh, reproductive and thyroid hormones, although evidence is mixed for some studies. So not only does it affect our health and it's found on us seven days, 21 days after, it also affects our coral because we put sunscreen on us, we jump in the water. The sunscreen evolves in the water and then goes into the coral, which actually destroys it. A research found in 2015 that up to 14,000 tons of it washed into coral reefs every year. Coral bleaching caused by um, oxybenzone causes baby coral to encast itself in its own skeleton and die. It's kind of sad. It's really sad. And then in addition to that, what we need to also consider is vitamin D and sunscreen. Remember that when you do apply the sunscreen, you're not getting vitamin D because you're blocking the ability to absorb it. Right. So what should you do? What should you do? And is there such a thing as safe sunscreen? Well, what sunscreen do you currently use? These are the questions that I would ask myself is what sunscreen do I currently use? What are the ingredients in this sunscreen? Are any of these ingredients dangerous for my health? Do a bit of research on each of the ingredients. Are they linked to endocrine disruptors, that cause cancer and so forth, right? How often do you use it? Do you use it once a year? Do you use it? throughout summer every single day how often do you use it what sunscreen do you use how often do you use it have you ever had a reaction to sunscreen do you what color skin are you um what clothes do you wear when you do go to the beach or when you're out do you cover up at all or do you expose as much as possible are you actually sun smart <laughs> what does that even mean do you wear a hat do you wear long sleeve do you wear sunglasses um all those things do you have a skin condition or previously had a skin condition 
what type of sunscreen do you use? Do you use the lotion? Do you use the spray? Do you use the roll-on? SP4050? What ingredients are in there, as I mentioned previously? What is your diet like? I know you're like, wow, what's that going to do with anything? But I mean, diet and high antioxidants actually assist with skin healing. So yeah. Have you got sunburn before? What happened when you were sunburned? What did you do? What did you use? Because it's not really good to get sunburned, right? What is your current vitamin D level? I did a video on what your level should be on episode 320. Check that out. All right, so what would I do? I'm going to answer your question. There's so many other questions to ask, but let's just today, let's just get straight into what I would do um, for a safe sunscreen alternative. Is do not depend on sunscreen to block UV radiation and help you. Yes, don't depend on them. Because if you depend on sunscreen, maybe dangerous. So what should you do? Well, I always say protect yourself. Wear clothes that cover up, wear a hat, wear sunglasses, right? Absolutely key. And don't, if no, there's no need to be, don't be in the sun at 1 midday, 1, 2 p.m. If there's no need to be there. Use some alternative sunscreens, which I'll go into, and play around the sun. Go out early in the morning, late in the afternoon when the UV isn't as intense. Get smart about finding out the UV in your current area. What, when is the UV the lowest, when it's the highest, and so forth. Get some like these shirts that I'm wearing right now. Really, um, these cover up up to about uh, three quarters, thick three quarters. They're really light. So even if it's a really hot day, it's covering up so i'm not going to get sunburn on my shoulders but it's really light where it's not hot okay get some of those shirts even pants that are really light if need to be in the sun and cover up find shade or make shade if you're like i'm going to the beach and you love it go for it but make some shade here especially in australia i know beaches all around the world they've got so many trees and makes beautiful shades but fortunately here in australia we don't have trees on beaches right so we need to make our own shade do it and don't get burnt don't be silly don't why why would you do it don't get burnt check your uv index get educated on it and if you are wanting a sunscreen which i believe you are let's find a sunscreen okay let's find a sunscreen that doesn't have ingredients chemicals preservatives in there that are dangerous if you checked out my episode that i did on sunscreen which was which i mentioned at the start which was episode 106 i mentioned how dangerous spray sunscreens are because you inhale it so stay away from them 100 percent check the ingredients out researched ingredients but then you can also go on to a beautiful website called www.ewg.org sunscreen right and you can put in a Sunscreen in there and it tells you if it's red, means don't go there. If it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, it's okay. Right, so sunscreen active ingredients should be titanium dioxide, um, zinc oxide, zinc oxide, and inactive ingredients that are safe, right? So the active ingredients should be titanium oxide, zinc oxide, nothing else, right? Um, so I know there's uh, zincs out there that just says pure zinc or whatever, but then there's fillers and other inactive ingredients that are dangerous. Check what those ingredients are. I use, I don't have it on me, but I use a baby one that's actually made in Australia. It's a sunscreen made in Australia. I absolutely love it. I think it's called, it's by Billy and Jill, Jill and Jill and Billy or something along those lines. I'll put it in the notes actually, so you can check it out. Um, I use that. It's made for babies. It does, it, it is a bit more whiter than usual, so you've got to rub it in. Um, but hey, that little bit of rubbing in compared to having some endocrine um, issues or some thyroid issues, I'll do that. I'll take that extra time to rub it in. So there you go, they have it. Yes, there are healthy and safe sunscreens. Should you rely on them? No. Should you do other things before even applying sunscreen? Yes. Sunscreen should not be the number one thing that you put on. It should be to play it safe, make shade, avoid the sun, protect yourself, wear clothing, hat, sunglasses. Don't get burnt. Check the UV index. Those are the things that I do, right? So be smart about the sun and play it sun smart and sun safe. And there are sunscreens out there, but you got to do your research and find the right ones. And at the bottom, I will include the one that I use at the moment. It may change. It may change. That's the one I'm using at the moment. Um, I hope I shed some light to the question. Anyone who is listening who may have had similar question to this, 
you have any questions, please contact me at mahela.raguz on Instagram. I'll be in touch with you. If you want to know all of the goodies like these products, um, guests, bonuses, questions, anything about health and success, join the <clears throat> wow my voice is going join the natural health podcast newsletter by clicking the link below specials sent straight into your box every friday and remember the missing link between failure and success is your health Content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstance, Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguz nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.